How would God tell Noah, build an ark? Rain has never fallen, and there is no big sea that we're going to put this ark. He said, build an ark on the ground. If Noah did not trust God, what would make Noah build the ark? The scripture says that Noah obeyed, and that was counted for him as faith. He is in Hebrews chapter 11. God told Abraham, leave your house and go to the place that I will show you of. Live where you are living with your parents. Live where you are comfortable. Live where you are having convenience and go to where I will show you. And Abraham left, not even knowing where he was going. I, for one, would tell God, explain, give me details. The greatest act of faith on this side of heaven is not naming and claiming. Like, I am naming and claiming for the car. I'm naming and claiming for the house. The greatest act of faith in life is obedience to God. Whenever you see someone that the Bible says by faith they did this, it is because they obeyed God. They believed and obeyed God. So that is why scripture says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. But then faith is not activated when it comes until you apply the word. And wisdom says when you hear the word and apply the word, you are a wise person that builds his or her house on the rock so that when the wind and the storm comes, that house remains and it's not broken down. The truth is that in our Christian life, the greatest act of faith that we would ever experience is to obey God. It is not to get those tangible blessings we are expecting. It is not to believe and receive the things we are waiting for. It is actually to obey when God speaks. Because God has patterns and plans and the ways he wants us to work. God wants us to walk with him with obedience. From the beginning, Adam and Eve did not believe God. That is why the devil could deceive them. Because once you don't believe God, it is easy to believe the deceit, to believe the lies of the enemy. And it is until you believe or trust someone before you can obey someone. Children who don't trust their parents don't really obey unless they are coerced to do the things that the parents said they should do. Or they are doing it not willingly, but by force, like I said, coercion. Now, for us to obey God, it means we trust God. So, obedience to God is the greatest act of faith, I repeat. Now, scripture did not say that we should try and obey. The song says, trust and obey, for there's no other way. Now, it is not try and obey, I will try and obey God, no. If you are trying to obey God, it means you are not trusting God. If you are trying to obey God, it means you do not know God. If you are trying to obey God, it means you don't have a real relationship with Him. You are just here for what you can get from God. And I am not sorry to say this, but I don't want you to get it the wrong way. I don't want you to feel bad either ways. But I want you to know that God wants you to trust Him. God wants you to get closer to Him because that is when you can obey Him. And when, once you obey him, that is when his promises in your life can come to fruition and full manifestation. You see the life of Abraham, when you read through Hebrews chapter 11, all those people that the Bible says, by faith they did this, by faith they did that, by faith they did the third, it was simply obedience to God. How would God tell Noah, build an ark, rain has never fallen, and there is no big sea that we're going to put this ark, he said build an ark on the ground. If Noah did not trust God, what would make Noah build the ark? The scripture says that Noah obeyed and that was counted for him as faith. He is in Hebrews chapter 11. God told Abraham, leave your house and go to the place that I will show you of. Live where you are living with your parents. Live where you are comfortable. Live where you are having convenience and go to where I will show you. And Abraham left, not even knowing where he was going. I, for one, would tell God, explain, give me details. Where am I going? Give me a word before I move. But God wants our obedience. You know, sometimes we disobey God with good intentions. Like Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 15. God told him, kill the old Amalekites because they are my enemies. And when Saul went there, he spared the king and he spared the young goats and the best of the sheep with the excuse that he wants to use it to make sacrifice to God. And then Samuel told him, really, did God really desire your sacrifice or your obedience? Because sometimes we feel that our good intentions are good enough to please God. 
not knowing that God is not even interested in how good your intentions are. God is interested in if he tells you remain here till I come back, remain there. If he tells you go over there till I come back and you go over there, not allowing the fear of people or the fear of what would happen to you to hold you back. I know this is easier said than done, but all I'm trying to buttress here is that Obedience to God is an intentional act that we need to go into fully so that we can harness all that God wants us to harness, all that God wants us to get in life. We can obtain all the blessings and all the promises of God in our lives. Now let me read that first Samuel 15. But Samuel replied, What is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offerings and sacrifices, or your obedience to his voice? Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice. And submission is better than offering the fat of rams. Rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft. And stubbornness as bad as worshipping idols. Now the truth is that we are humans, of course. We feel like our good intentions are good enough for God to be pleased. But God is pleased when we obey the voice of his word. Which means through the scriptures, we have the word of God for us to hear and to obey. And it is a sign of faith when God tells me, stay away from sexual immorality and I will go there. Stay away from fornication. Stay away from adultery. Stay away from prostitution. And I hear and I obey. What does it do for me? It makes God pleased because I have obeyed him. And then I will receive a reward from God that I would not receive otherwise. It should not even be about what I can get from God should be about me obeying the voice of his word because that is what makes him pleased. And let me say this one. Obedience can make you look stupid. Obedience to God. Because sometimes the things that God would ask you to do would look so stupid to the human mind. How would God ask Noah to just build an ark and put on the ground? People would laugh at him like, <laughs> Noah, what is this? Like, are you okay? Are you insane right now? But if you hate God and God told you to move, then you have to move. I just believe this message is for someone. Maybe God has been speaking to you and you are yet to obey him. Maybe because you feel like, ah, uh, this feels so silly. This feels so stupid. People are, you know, people are just going to laugh at me. Like, what am I even doing? Just like Peter in Luke chapter 5. Peter had stole all night with the other disciples. They caught nothing. These are fishermen. This is their occupation. They did not catch anything. And now Jesus came and told him, cast the net by the right side. And it was like, mm. when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master Simon replied, We worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I will let the nets down again. And this time their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat, and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. You have to know faith in God is actually activated by obedience to God. Faith in God is not activated by you. Your mental you know, imagination, you just imagining it happening. They will say put it in your mind and believe it and imagine it so that you can happen. No. It is obedience to God. When God tells you do this and you do it, that is when you activate faith. When God tells you live this way and you live that way, you are activating faith in your life. That is where faith is birth. Obedience. And that is why I said obedience is the greatest act of faith. Lastly, let me read the scripture in Hebrews 11. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God who warned him about the things that had never happened before. Obedience. Again in verse 8 it says, It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. So it is all about obedience. Faith is a work of obedience. When the Bible says that we walk by faith, it means we walk by obeying God. When I studied the life of Moses in Exodus, it was all about Moses just obeying God. God told Moses, do this, Moses would do it. God told Moses, go here, Moses would go there. When there is a problem, Moses would go back to God and tell God, now this is it, this is what is happening. This is the, the situation. This is what the children of Israel are saying. And God will speak to him and he will do. So it is about walking in sync with God, hearing the voice of God and doing 
so, which is following through with what God commands and what He says. This is how you walk in obedience, and this is how you activate faith in your life, walking by obedience. We live by faith means we live by obeying God. That is it. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I am Owe Wekban. It is my pleasure to bring contents like this your way. If you love it, let me know in the comment section and hit the like button so that YouTube algorithm will spread this video to other people who would love to watch and be blessed also. Thank you and God bless you. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.